How's it going, guys? Medium difficulty question for immunology slash pharmacology for step one. It can look a bit difficult when we see some of these answer choices, but I'll tell you exactly what you need to know. This question is not that bad. And even if you instantly know the answer and you say, oh, that's easy, like not a big deal, I'll tell you some high yield factoids that you might not be thinking of. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M E H L M A N underscore medical. The link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now start the clip. 16-year-old boy, one-month history of bloody mucoid stools, no past medical history. Vitals are within normal limits. His mother has plaque psoriasis. Laboratory studies are shown. Hemoglobin low, 10.5 grams per deciliter. Should be 13 to 17.5 in males and non-menstruating women. 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women. White blood cells, upper end of normal at 11,000 per microliter. Should be 4 to 11,000. ESR elevated. Question asks, in addition to NSAIDs and corticosteroids, a monoclonal antibody is considered as part of this patient's treatment regimen. The molecular target of this latter pharmacologic therapy is most saliently responsible for which of the following. Now, the diagnosis here is inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, we don't know whether it's necessarily Crohn or ulcerative colitis. It's not the focus of this question. We don't really care. Uh, but we should note that uh, the relation to plaque psoriasis is high yield. HLA-B27 constellation, okay, pair, P-A-I-R, psoriasis, ankylosing spondylitis, inflammatory bowel disease, reactive arthritis. So if they said, for example, uh, he has bloody mucoid stools, we don't say anything about the mom, but we say he also has lower back pain that's worse in the morning, gets better throughout the day. That's sacroiliitis, okay, part of ankylosing spondylitis. So his hemoglobin's low because presumably of anemia of chronic disease, all right, so inflam inflammatory cytokines elevated, and we can get a reduction in hemoglobin uh, and low serum iron, even though ferritin is normal. Ferritin is the most uh, sensitive marker for true iron levels. So we are, we're going to use a monoclonal antibody here. And if you have already learned some farm, you'll know that for various autoimmune conditions that are non-responsive to more conservative therapies, such as NSAIDs or corticosteroids, as well as for ver uh, immunosuppression in general, uh, we can use monoclonal antibodies that target TNF-alpha. So infliximab and adalimumab are high yield uh, monoclonal antibodies that target TNF-alpha. Etanercept is slightly different. It's a recombinant receptor that mops up TNF-alpha. Okay, so it's a recombinant TNF-alpha receptor. I just reiterate that infliximab and adalimumab, they target soluble TNF-alpha, just TNF-alpha floating around, not TNF-alpha receptor. Uh, the US simile does distinguish that, and students have fucked it up despite knowing the farm, otherwise perfectly fine. So we just say, what's TNF-alpha saliently do? And we write saliently as in like most specifically responsible for, because by all means, uh, we could Google and dig up articles where TNF-alpha could theoretically do any of these, right? But what does US simile actually give a fuck about? So let's just walk through the answer choices here. Choice A, antibody, isotype, class switching, wrong answer. This is going to be uh, hyper IgM syndrome. It's not a specific cytokine that does it. You just need to know that uh, if you get an immunodeficiency for pediatrics or just immuno in general, they give you a big fucking paragraph and then they say IgM is super high. The other immunoglobulins are low. Uh, answer is deficiency of CD40 ligand. So CD40L on the surface of Th2 CD4 plus T cells will bind a CD40 receptor on B cells, and that enables IgM to be converted into the other types of immunoglobulins, IgG, IgE, IgA, IgD. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, hypothalamic temperature set point alteration is wrong answer. This is saliently interleukin-1. Okay, now once again, as I prefaced with, we could probably find articles where TNF-alpha plays a role, but USMLE wants you to know fever is IL-1. This is really, really, really high yield, okay? Uh, they ask this across NBME forms. They might give you septic shock, there's a fever, low blood pressure, and they say, which of the following cytokines is most uh, responsible for the fever? The answer is just IL-1, okay? Really, really important you know that. Now I'll tell you something that uh, might sound common sense, but if they tell you uh, a patient has a fever and an NSAID is given and the fever goes down and they say, uh, this is due to which, uh, due to effects on which of the following mediators. The answer is prostaglandin, not IL-1, because we gave an NSAID, which inhibits COX, which decreases prostaglandin synthesis. 
So you need to know interleukin-1 and prostaglandins both affect temperature set point. If they mention NSAIDs in a question, they're asking about prostaglandins, not, a, not IL-1. But you just need to know for sepsis in general, just uh, general uh, immune responses, IL-1, really high yield for fever. Let's just move forward. Choice C, macrophage secretion of IL-12, wrong answer. This is interferon gamma. So Th1, uh, CD4 plus T cells will secrete interferon gamma, which stimulates macrophages to produce cytokines, especially IL-12, which in turn will activate more Th1 T cells to secrete more IFN gamma. So it's an IL-12 interferon gamma loop. IL-12 from the macrophages will also stimulate NK cells to secrete IFN gamma. Wrong fucking answer. But I talk about this in my high-yield immuno PDF. Okay, I have nice fancy uh, diagrams there. Choice D, tight junction permeability is the correct answer. Okay, so this is what US simile wants for TNF alpha, increases vascular permeability. Uh, so uh, decreases tight junction expression as well as increases their sep their degree of separation uh, for endothelial cells as well as epithelial mm -hmm. cells in the gut. Okay, I've seen a question with IBD where they said some sort of radio labeled dye was injected into the bowel. Uh, in a patient who had IBD, uh, the radio labeled dye showed up in the blood and the patient who did not have IBD, it did not show up in the blood. And the answer, like they said, which the um, decreased expression of which the following was responsible and the answer is uh, tight junction. Okay, so TNF alpha is responsible for leaky vessels and septic shock. That's really, really high yield. So as I mentioned before with the IL-1, if they give you sepsis, low blood pressure, and fever, they say, uh, which of the following cytokines are most responsible for this patient's condition, they will give you the combo. It'll be TNF-alpha and IL-1. If they ask you for the fever, it's IL-1. If they ask you for the low blood pressure, it's TNF-alpha. Really, really high yield, okay? Really high yield. So TNF-alpha, uh, tight junction permeability, it disrupts this. You need to know that. And then just quickly, T lymphocyte activation, wrong answer. This is interleukin-2. That's what USMLA wants. Now, once again, a myriad of cytokines will help activate T cells. Yes, okay. You know, some of you are going to be pedantic about things, but when we talk about USMLE, your actual points, what do they give a fuck about? Interleukin 2 across the uh, NBME exams is synonymous with T lymphocyte activation. Okay, corticosteroids, they want you to know decrease T lymphocyte function, and they want you to know cyclosporin, tacrolimus, and sirolimus are going to decrease IL-2 transcription ultimately, slash responsiveness to IL-2. Some resources uh, have made a distinction between those drugs as far as uh, IL-2 responsiveness versus transcription. USMLE doesn't really give a fuck. They just want you to know that tacrolimus and cyclosporin are going to decrease intracellular calcineurin. Uh, Cyrolimus does not decrease intracellular calcineurin. So that's it for this question. Uh, you know the deal, I'm gonna continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel and I appreciate your time. That's it.